For more insight into emergency preparations, former FEMA administrator and former and Florida native David Paulison joins us now on the phone. David, thank you so much for joining us. I understand that you're near Fort Lauderdale, sir. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, I've been in my house with my grandkids and my wife and daughters, so okay. we're hunkering down. Okay, so you're hunkering down for the storm. Can you give us sort of uh, just a, a landscape of what is taking place right now in the state of Florida? We have been bracing for the worst, but now that the storm seems to be shifting a little bit to the west, does that mean that, that there are more, more resources being allocated to that part of the state? Well, it's, uh, what's happening, even though the storm is shifted to the west, don't forget how large this thing is. I know you talked about it earlier. Uh, so we're here, even on the east coast of Florida, we're predicted to get uh, heavy uh, uh, tropical force winds and maybe even hurricane force winds. So, uh, so the resources are going to have to stay pat right now until the storm goes through, and then they'll start moving in. The problem is the, the storm is moving south to north right up the state. Right. So uh, I know FEMA has a lot of stuff staged in Orlando, but they've also staged stuff uh, outside in, in Georgia and, and their surrounding states uh, to move in after the storm passes. We've we've heard from officials, and obviously the governor said, you know, once the storm makes landfall, there will not be rescues taking place. It's then uh, it's it's people have to obviously fend for themselves. What I'm curious as to what happens immediately after the storm passes. How how do you spring? How does FEMA spring into action? And obviously alongside of first responders as well. Yeah, the, the first response is going to be from the local fire and, 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 and fire and police. And the first thing they're going to have to do is to uh, clear the roads, because a lot of times there's so much debris on the road, they can't even get through. I know in Hurricane Andrew, we had to bring in front end loaders to go in front of the uh, fire trucks and ambulances just so they could get from A to B. And it took a long time to do that. So, you know, we could possibly have that same type of scenario over here. FEMA will be coming in to support uh, the local communities and the counties. Uh, you know, they're not first responders, but they'll be right there with them. They're, they're already located in the, in the uh, county emergency operations centers or at the state oper uh, emergency operations center uh, to see what the needs are. And as soon as they learn what those needs are, then they can start moving those supplies in. You know, uh, but they're, go ahead. That, that's sort of what I wanted to ask you, because there's so many resources, as you mentioned, let's say in the state of Georgia, just sort of waiting to get deployed. But if you think of I-95 and I-75, specifically I-75 going up towards that western side of the state, that travels from south to north, obviously, or north to south, depending on how you look at it. And that's really the track of the storm. So they could be seeing really some huge challenges as resources try to come down. That, that was no question about it. That's a great observation, because that's actually what's going to happen. And there are already supplies here. Don't forget, the locals have supplies. Right. Team has already moved supplies in. Uh, you know, what we changed our, our philosophy in Katrina was instead of waiting for the local community to become overwhelmed before the state steps in, wait for the state to become overwhelmed before the federal government steps in, we convinced President Bush to allow us to do a disaster declaration prior to landfall. So even before there's any damage, we did a disaster declaration. That allowed FEMA to spend money out of the disaster relief fund to move supplies in early. And uh, the, uh, Craig Fugate, who followed me, uh, is, did the same example, and Brock Long, the new FEMA administrator, is, is using that same philosophy. So there's a lot of stuff already here. Will they need more stuff? Absolutely, they will. And that stuff will follow. All right. But that's why, yeah, that's why we tell people you got to have you on your own for three or four or five days. Right. All right, David Paulson, thank you so much, sir. We appreciate it. Our thoughts and prayers are with you uh, over this weekend. Thank you. Thank you.